So I'm guessing you clicked on this video because you're feeling a lot like this. Tired, unmotivated, uninspired, and just lazy. If that's where you're at, you've come to the right place. Let's talk about 10 healthy habits you can introduce into your life to leave your lazy era behind and step into the new and improved you. Perhaps your growth era. I want to give a quick disclaimer first, because I know as a neurodivergent person, I've been called lazy before in place of talking about my executive functioning abilities. I know that there are challenges that come with being ADHD or autistic that cause your executive functioning to be worse. That is not what I'm talking about today. I am talking about when you just kind of feel lazy and unmotivated and uninterested in doing things, not because you can't do them, but because you're just feeling low and lazy. And if you're feeling exhausted, you should probably watch this video first and then come back here, okay? Habit number one is journaling. For myself, wait, I have my journal. Journaling. <laughs> I know for myself, when I'm feeling lazy as fuck, one of the things that can pull me out of that feeling is sitting down and taking everything that's in my brain and dumping it on paper to give me some sort of direction. I've been journaling for many, many years now, and so it feels really easy to do it, but I know that there can be a big barrier of entry to do journaling because it sounds hard. My suggestion, when you sit down to journal, if you're feeling lazy, you're feeling unmotivated, you don't wanna do the thing, is to just take the initial thoughts that you have and dump them on your page. So maybe you're thinking, I really gotta do that laundry, but I don't want to. Dump it on the page, write it down. I really wanna edit that video, but that's gonna take me a long time. Dump it on the page, just write it down. Doesn't necessarily mean you need to go do all of the things that you're about to write down, but it gives you a space to clear up some of that like mental fog you're carrying around with you when you're feeling unmotivated. I'm not gonna lie, I don't journal every day. I'd sit here and be a liar if I told you that I did uh, to try to look cooler because journaling's cool. Um, but the reason I don't journal every day is because it doesn't feel good every day for me. There are other ways that I can journal, which uh, like type of journal, which would be like talking to other people or talking out loud to myself. Sometimes when I'm in like the laziest of moods, I'll be lying in my bed and just be like, Haley, just go brush your teeth. That's step one, just do that. And that's the equivalent of me brain dumping onto a piece of paper. So I'm not gonna lie, I forgot that I needed this uh, for this part of the video. So pretend I had this the whole time. So the next habit is staying hydrated. <laughs> It doesn't matter how it gets done because you can get hydrated over many different ways. Having just raw dog water is an option uh, through a fun water bottle that maybe adds a little bit more interest into it. Um, I don't drink raw water if it's like out of a cup, but I will drink it if it's out of a fun water bottle. Also, this water bottle has like a sippy option and then like a chug option Who thinks of this? <laughs> Give yourself permission to drink water in ways that makes it easiest to hydrate yourself. The ways that I stay hydrated is by drinking carbonated water of some sort, like bubblies. Oh, I'll fuck up a box of bubblies. Like I go through like three boxes of bubblies a week because it's the main way that I drink water. So it's worth it to me to financially spend the money on it. Um, the other way is by drinking tea. I drink a fuck ton of tea as well because it tastes good. It's like a treat, but it's also still water. According to research, even mild dehydration can impair your brain's ability to function. And I know you're dehydrated watching this, so like you should go grab a fucking water. <laughs> if you're a person that struggles to remember to drink water, maybe habit stacking would be helpful for you. So for example, I know that every single day I am going to go pee. First thing in the morning, I wake up and I pee it like in my bed. I, <laughs> I'm a bed wetter, actually, no. <laughs> I'm first thing in the morning, always get up and go to the washroom and I use the washroom. So it'd be really helpful for me to have a glass of water there or a water bottle already in there that I can grab and drink and start my day. I'm habit stacking it so it's harder for me to forget to do that task. So hydrate, your body will thank you. If you are stuck in lazy, negative energy, you know, you're doom scrolling on the couch and you don't really wanna do anything else, I find that one of the best things for me to do is to just change the energy of the space. I know I can feel like gross after like lying around for a long time. And so what I do is I do a complete reset. That often means that I'll go brush my teeth. 
really easy way for me to feel like fresh and clean and good and able to move forward. Or I'll do a full shower reset sometimes in the middle of the day. <laughs> I'll work on tasks for a while and then hit this slump that I don't feel like I'm able to move forward. And I'll go and take a shower halfway through the day to reset my energy. I used to feel like I could only have showers first thing in the morning or late at night, but I started using it as a tool to reset me in the middle of the day. And my God, it feels so good. Halfway through the day, I'll light some candles and have a dark shower. It resets my energy, resets the mood, makes me feel more motivated to move forward. Habit number four is moving your body. I always talk about how important it is to move your body, but I also think that we frequently have this intense barrier in front of movement. I don't know about you, but when I think of movement, I think about like going to the gym. And as much as I want to be the girl that first thing in the morning goes to the gym every single day, I'm not, I'm not. I've learned it now, I understand I'm not that girl. I'd like to be, but I'm not. And so I need to think of alternatives for me. I need to lower that barrier of entry so it's more achievable. For myself, the way that I do this is I walk my dog every single morning. Dog. I've seen a bunch of other videos that try to give you habits to work towards every single day. And so many of them are like, hit 10,000 steps a day. I'm not gonna lie, that seems really, really hard and like a very big barrier of entry for me because I'm sitting most of the day if I'm not lying, right? Like, it makes more sense for me to set a goal that's more realistic, the lowest barrier of entry. Can I hit 2,000 steps a day? Probably, probably pretty easily, but setting the goal to be more achievable. Can you walk around the block before you start your work day? Can you uh, set up a yoga session for first thing in the morning? How can you get movement into your day so that your body and your brain gets all that lovely dopamine and then you get moving and grooving and you feel good and then you take over the world? That's my goal. <laughs> <laughs> Habit number five is opening and closing shifts. What? Capitalism. <laughs> The reason I love this tool is because it gives structure to my day. My top video at the moment is all about routines. And a lot of the comments are hugely positive because the way that I do routines is very like fluctuating based on your energy level. But I do find for myself that I really need some clear structure for me to get things done. For example, my kitchen used to be constantly and always a mess, but now, I'm treating my house as though it is my place of work. And at the end of the day, I need to do a closing shift to close down my place of work. And so what that looks like for me is every night, I load my dishwasher with all of the gross stuff and then I run it overnight. That is my closing shift piece of work that I need to do. And then in the morning, my opening shift would require me to open the dishwasher, put those dishes away so that that process can continue to function. I feel productive because the first thing I do in a day is a task that feels good. So creating an opening and closing shift to your home. Habit number six is waking up to the sun. Oh, your sun, wake up to your sun. If you don't have one, get one. <laughs> One of the habits that I started using that was so helpful for me was I replaced my alarm clock instead of being my phone. I made it a sunrise alarm clock. And so every morning I'm waking up to the sun and the sounds of birds actually is my alarm clock right now. And it's so much nicer. It feels easier to get up in the morning because my brain is getting the signals of daytime, time to get up, it's the morning. Whereas if I look at my phone screen, I feel tired, I feel restless, I start scrolling and it doesn't really feel as productive as when I am away from my phone and waking up to a different alarm system. So. Plug your phone away from your bed. I know that that's hard to do. I'm not gonna lie. I don't do that. <laughs> I have good enough self-discipline now to not scroll before uh, going to bed and in the morning. But if you don't, which you might not, put your phone somewhere else to charge overnight and use a different alarm clock. Ideally one that incorporates sun in some way, like a sunrise alarm clock. Before you go to bed, replace your phone with 10 pages of a book. I know that that sounds like, oh, that sounds easy. It's not that hard to read 10 pages. 
can be when you're addicted to your phone. <laughs> the phone gives you signals of you know being awake and um, it stimulates your brain enough to make it harder for you to fall asleep, which makes you groggier the next day, which might make you feel more lazy. So replace that phone time with reading a book. I'm currently reading um, A Court of Thorn of Roses. <sighs> That does something else to me before bed. You know what I you know what I mean. If you've read you know, you know what I mean. Habit number eight is time blocking your day. You were to look at my calendar. It's a little insane because I time block my entire day. What this does is it gives me clear ideas of how I'm supposed to be spending my time every day. I'll schedule in rest, I'll schedule in lunch, I'll do all of those things because it gives me a clear sense of how I should be spending my time. Sometimes I don't use it perfectly, but most of the time I stick to it. I use Google Calendar because it's the most widely accepted calendar of sorts. So I can send invitations to my friends or my family and they'll accept them and likely use them as well. Once I do have my time blocking in my schedule, I'll use a visual timer. Oh! Um, I'll use a visual timer to then count down how long I have to do that task, which is super supportive. Habit number nine is extrinsic motivation. I know for myself, if I don't intrinsically want to do something, I won't do it. There's a fire! <laughs> I'm just being lazy. I really should do this thing, but nothing is giving me the motivation to do it. So building extrinsic motivation can be really helpful. So for example, I hate accounting. I hate finances, I hate all of that stuff. And so what I do is I have financial date nights. Yeah, it's sexy. Um, essentially what I do is I put it in my calendar as this is gonna be my financial date night and I'm gonna order myself a nice dinner and try to get a portion of the task done before the dinner arrives, have myself a nice dinner and then finish the task after that and have like a nice dessert later. Those are two types of rewards that really work for me and make me feel good and make me wanna do the task. If you're disciplined, this is something that you can use. If it's not, I don't know, f get disciplined, dude. <laughs> Habit number 10 is what you think you will be. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. What you consume is what you become. And so whatever messages you are hearing throughout a day is what you are gonna believe about yourself and the world. And so if you are just consuming useless content on reels or TikTok, and it's just like garbage, I mean, it's probably really like funny and interesting and it might be my stuff, which is, good, right? But if it's not positive information that's actually supporting you or helping you in any way, it might just give you this like brain rot and negative belief of yourself. I'm not as pretty as these people. I'm not as funny as these people. I'm not as successful as these people. So if you start to consume content that is positive and creating motivation in your life, that might be really helpful. I've started to listen to more self-help books or affirmation podcasts, um, just things that make me feel motivated and excited to do things. And I find that my motivation levels skyrocket when I'm consuming content that makes me feel excited because it's pushing me in a direction of my dreams. So what you consume, you become. So make sure that you are scrolling uh, content creators that, what's the word? Ow. <laughs> Make sure you're consuming content from content creators that motivate you towards your dreams. And I think that's me actually. So you should follow me on Instagram. Here it is. <laughs> so thank you for watching this video. I'm excited to watch you get out of your lazy era because you can do that. I think you can. I've done it mostly. Some days it's hard. I'm going to be honest with you, but I think we can do this together. Should, should we kiss? Or... <laughs> and as always, if no one has told you yet today, I am so proud of you for putting in the work for yourself because nobody else is going to do it. So it's pretty <laughs> cool that you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. Now should we kiss? <laughs>